Hello and welcome to Kaleido, where it is Pioneer Days down here in Putnam County. And the Volleyball Invitational hosted by the Kaleido Wildcats is already underway. And here we are, semi-final matches to bring to you here this, this evening, this morning, this afternoon. Whenever you're taking this one back in, it'll be the Wildcats hosting the Blue Jays from Delphi St. John's. Hi, everybody. Garrett Bansford alongside Mark Shine. Invitational season continues to roll on. We're starting to get into the heart of the season, but this is always a good one, Mark, that we circle on our calendars that bring us some high-flying volleyball action your way. You know, I think I've been here just about every year they've had one of these in the last several years. It's always a good day. It's a festive atmosphere uptown here, and people come in and watch the games here and over at St. Mike's, and they follow their team, kind of bounce back and forth a little bit, but uh, it's always a good day to come up here and watch volleyball. Look at the starting lineups for Kaleida, and then we'll jump over to Mark for St. John's. First out there for the Wildcats, you're going to have Catherine Krause, Reese Strauer, and then Madison Unverfurth is the libero in the lineup. Maria Girding, Olivia Meyer, and Malia Romes round out the lineup for Kaleida as St. John's serves in. Who's that first six out there for St. John's? Well, we'll go with Megan Keener, uh, Kerner, Layla Seitz, Caleb Bining, Grace Mentor, Avery Altenberger, Elena Martin, and Madeline, Madeline Conley. There's your first out there for the Blue Jays. First point goes to St. John's. A big attack for Rome's. And we're going to find the floor for St. John's. Had a player in the net for Kaleida. Look at the season for these two clubs. Kaleida comes in now 5-2 and two after a, a win in their first match of the day against North Central at a Pioneer. Northwest corner of the state. A little tap over for Olivia Meyer gets the first Kaleida point of the morning. Kind of a fitting place for the Pioneers here on Pioneer right. Day. And on the other end for St. John's, they're now five and three. They defeated Wayne Trace in their opening round game. At the rally to get this one back over, it's Kerner with a long launch. It was wide and out the back, so it's gonna stay with Kaleida. Good effort to get to that one, just hit it long. Here's the serve, Reese Strauer. Attack for St. John's, nice dig. That's gonna go over and out. Right to Binding, tapped it outside the stripe. She tried to get it to go straight down towards the sideline and just overhit it. Next serve for Strauer. And knocked over, there's the dig. Set for Kraus to Rome's big attack, and landed that one in the back corner. She is gonna do a lot of that, really does, all, does it all for the Wildcats. 62 kills coming into today's action, and one of the top volleyball players in Northwest Ohio. Almost four kills per set. What that average comes out to. Here's Kraus, long set this time for Sophie Vorst, that's dug out. And it's Blue Jays keep it in the air, sent over. Here's Adeline Huber, misread the roster for you earlier. The Huber able to be the last one to touch it, send it over for Kaleida. She really got a good set. Took the ball, sophomore, really good hitter at 5-9. Huber, the number two attacker next to Rome's, and that's really the two that lead the way. They do a lot of things well It stand out on the stat sheet for Kaleida. But the Blue Jays of St. John's hanging right in there. That was Madeline Conley. She leads this team, or second of this team, with 66 kills. Seitz is actually the leader at 97 coming into today's action. They defeated Wayne Trace 25-14 and 25-22 in the other gym where this tournament is being played, St. Michael's. Tapped over by Rome's. Now, both of these teams, Mark, had to sit for a while. Had a long mm. match in here, the preceding match before this one got going. We'll see how they've come out. So they're pretty even to get started. And here Huber bounces it over in the Blue Jays. Right in the wheelhouse of Rome's. And punished it. 
That's a really good play. She had to stay on the floor before Rome's is hit. Otherwise, it would have been an illegal back row attack that was hit over by Huber. Really wise play for her. And then a pop up to Rome should put it away. Service in. Menard sets up Connolly, and she drops one in the backside. Finally, second kill here in the opening set. One of those top attackers, Conley, and sights the two to look out for, as you mentioned already, Mark. Here's the libero to serve. That's a Avery Altenberger. Rollins receives that. Set up for by Krause and Huber. Knocks it in. Her second kill as well. Net play early on going the way of Kaleida. Kendall Krause checks in now for Coletta as Rome's drops the serve. Coletta as a team, just 27, right, excuse me, they're over 80 or nearly a 90% service this year. And uh, just 75 service errors through their first six matches. That's very efficient. Rome's first A, she has 23 on the season. There's the setup for Seitz, sends it to the back and might have been out, but Kaleida has to rally. Return the volley. Here's Seitz on the attack again and is able to plant that one along that far sideline. Kayla Seitz, 97 kills. That's her first of today. Good cross court hit. Early lead for Kaleida, but the Blue Jays, a couple of big scores away from evening this up. But there's Huber, big hit, dug out by Altenberger. Now Rome's will set for Kraus. Here's Huber again. Nice dig on the St. John's side, but fell apart there near the net. Well, Leah Rome's talked about her being one of the top players in Northwest Ohio. When she's a back row player, she oftentimes sets, as we have seen so far today. She has 50 assists coming into today's action at 6-3. Big hit for Seitz to get the score for Bat or for uh, St. John's. And the interesting part about Kalata, you, you touched on that, Mark. They, they spread it around in the passing game, and that's really really means you can't hone in on any one player and really makes the offense pretty fluid. Well, the thing with Rome, so she as a, a back row player right now, she might hit from behind the 10 foot line or she might set. You just could be very aware of where she might be and what her opportunities are. Here's a set. And going that far side for Strar. And a block in the front. Looks like you had Kendall Krause in there. Denied the attack for St. John's. Kepler goes 5-8 as a freshman, excuse me, as a junior, got up high and played that one. Here's the set. Strawer again. Altenberger finds it over top. Twice she's done that now, run balls away. Got a good play, and that's gonna be a point. I just said. Tough angle. It was Elena Martin, I think, will get credit for that one. The sights will go back to serve. She'll send this one through. And that falls in. It hits the top of the top of the net. Collada ready to receive. You can see Rome's is already turning around so she could catch a pass, and instead the ball fell in front of her or behind her. 93% serving as a team is St. John's. Having success there as well, and another kill, Elena Martin. Two for her. Been a good turnaround for Dolphus St. John, six and 15 a year ago. They did not win a MAC contest a year ago. They're five and three this year, one and one in the MAC, so already improving on what they did a year ago. Coach Ali Elwer. Overball out for the receive. Another 
Score for St. John's. Lee Binding was the last to touch it. Set up by the really good serve by Seitz. The return went over the net and put away. And service air for Seitz to her longer turn. Serving comes to a close. Now Catherine Kraus checks back in for Coletta and will serve. One point advantage for the Wildcats. Serve in. And we're seeing St. John's have to rally to some balls here early on, but they're able to successfully do that. But Romes finds that open spot on the floor. Really good pass, really good assist to get the ball into her wheelhouse. And when you do that, she's very difficult to defend. Another Krauss serve. And not quite going to get dug out. This play to Huber back a, a bit. So here, Elena Martin will serve once more for the Blue Jays. Good serve. To be tapped over. Here's the set for Moner. And two attempts by Madeline Connolly. First one was all right, but returned. And the second. Rolled along the tape, Garrett, and it fell out of mm -hmm. bounds. Still a two-point advantage in this first set for Kaleida. Low line drive serve. And an ace in there for Kaleida. Restraw the la or the serve turn will continue. It's one of the things for St. John's that, that stood out. You know, whether it's on their end accurately, but 124 receive errors. You know, every time you have an ace, statistically, you have to have a receive error that goes along with it. So it's not always at their fault, uh, but those rack up and they've racked up quickly for St. Johnson through the first couple of matches this year. Here's the attack for Kaleida, that's Sophie Vorst. And it's gonna fall short for St. John's. So the lead goes to three. St. John's has been able to get their hands on a lot of ball and pop them up in the air, but have not been able to get that third hit to go over. Olivia Meyer serving now for Kaleida. Received by Ella Martz. And now Seitz on the attack. Found a, a hole in the back row. Look at the sights from behind the 10-foot line. Third kill for her. Been very impressed with how she's played in the opening set in all phases of the game. Carly Siefker in there defensively for Kaleida. They'll serve her away, but Malia Romes receives. And now Huber hits that, trying to go down that near sideline. It fires it wide. It came off her hand funny. Had a lot of spin on it sideways. It kicked out of bounds. Avery Altenberger serves it back in. Here's Huber, that same spot. Now Bender with a pass to Seitz, dug out by the Cats. And Vorst fires long on a cross-court try. See the setter moving the ball around, Katherine Kraus. It's gonna go outside for Huber. Altenberger passes for Seitz. Nice job by Seifer, just poked the arm out there to keep the ball in the air. Now Seitz again, met by Seifer. Underhand pass for Romes, that's just hard to stop. It is, her fourth kill, they had just a single blocker there that time, and as talented as she is, you try to get two blockers to her, but not from that particular angle. Now she goes back to serve where she'll set again. Seed by Conley. And out the back end. You watch the serve by Malia Romes. She throws it up in the air and then gets a whole lot of top spin on it and she serves the ball from a very high angle. Watch the ball dive as it goes across mm -hmm. the net. Blocked in the front. And attack for Vorst. Dug out by the Blue Jays. Good back and forth here as this set has settled in. 
And I think we're going to get a get four hits. That didn't clear yep. the net. Four contacts, that's correct. Didn't get a hand on it as a blocker. Very competitive opening set. Here's Conley. Rome's just a little short. Yeah. She wanted to cross up the defense rather than set, put it over on contact number two, and she just left it in the tape. We're tied at 17. Bonner on the set. Sights, great dig by Seifker. Now Vorst with a pat over the top. Difficult hit for Vorst with a tough angle. Rome sets. Huber, and it falls. Wildcats by one. They'll drop Sophie Vorst to serve. Her turn comes up. Received by Layla Seitz. Pass is going to go back to her. And tipped at the net and out. Seitz, fourth kill. You know, we played 36 points, Garrett, without a timeout. Mm -hmm. It has been that competitive. Nobody's been able to get on a lengthy run and force the opponent to call his timeout to, to, to kind of stem that run. Here's Kerner. And it's going to go outside for Strahr. Now Seitz hit into the net. She was expecting the set to be a little deeper to her. By the time she was able to get to it, it was down lower, and she hit, hit into the net. Mm -hmm. Both of these teams are in the mid-30s in terms of their kill percentage. Good reaction to keep that ball alive. They go outside, left for sights. Now an outside attack for Strahr and dug by Altenberger, but we're going to get an infraction right at the net on Kaleida. Called prolonged contact on a lift. That will allow the service to go back to sites. And serve goes in for St. John's. And a bad set for Rome's. That was. Not a typical set for her. Two-point lead. And St. John's thinks it's a timeout. It's actually just a substitution. They're going to bring in a number eight. Is he wrecker for Romus? And she will set. And there is a kill from Reese Strahr. Kraus in the contest again as she rotates back to serve. And with Romus moving to the front row on the rotation, she gets right back in the match. Neck and neck here in the first. Kraus serving. And there's a big block in the front. Here's Kraus with the serve for Kaleida. And a back row attack from Layla Seitz. Now there's Rome. Rome's again. Talk about great vision, Garrett. She just saw that open spot. We're going to get our first time out. Executed well. Nearing the end of our first set, 22-21. We'll take the time out as well. Be back after this. Late stages of our opening set. Our semifinal of the... Pioneer Days Invitational at Kaleida. Wildcats and Adelphus St. John's Blue Jays going back and forth, and we're knotted up again. 22 all now, out of the timeout. Good timeout. Caleb Binding gets a kill to even it up at 22. And Elena Martin serves it back in. Kaleida just has to settle for that third hit over the top. There's Madeline Connolly and causes some disruption on the Kaleida side. Yeah, prolonged contact. She tried to lift the ball, just didn't get it up high enough to know her first contact. 
you make that first contact below the belt and try to push it upwards, and timeout Kaleida. They're going to talk it over after the next two points. Go to St. John's. We'll pause as well. 22-23 from Kaleida on WOSN. Our scoreboard sponsor today is Finley Truck in RV, your complete automotive experience and competitive prices. Play stages in our first set with Kaleida trying to rally back, but the Blue Jays get a big black up front and convert it. Now they're on set points. St. John's called timeout, trailing 22-21. Good timeout for them. They've scored the last three points and have a chance to win the set. Romas receives. They'll set her direction to hand tap over the top. Conley just dropped it over there. Now Huber sends it back. Men are to sight, and that just ricochets off the, the arms of the libero, Madison Unverfirth. And that closes our first set. 25-22, St. John's with a one set to none advantage. Tot take a timeout and return to set two on the way after this on WOSN. Welcome back to Kalina, set number two between Delta St. John's and the Wildcats hosting the tournaments here today. Pioneer Days 2024. The Blue Jays had an impressive first set, and really it was just a fun set to watch, Mark, as they both teams went back and forth. Couple well timed timeouts, and the Blue Jays were able to capture that late momentum to the win. It was 22 21 Kalina when they called timeout, got it to. 25, 21, 22 victory. 14 kills in the opening set. Six of them, or five of them by Seitz. 12 kills for Kaleida. Six of them by Romas. Right. On to the St. John's end. And Romas just disrupts the little finesse play at the net. They'll win the first point. That 6-3 size and hung in the air long enough to tip the ball out, of, out away from the Delphi St. John's players. And she yeah. comes up with another block. Did it again, yep. She was very demonstrative at the timeout between uh, set breaks there and really exhorting her teammates to play better. She's come out and going to be a leader right now. Adeline Huber comes through with another ace. She had 19 before today. That's her first in this match today. Serves well over 90%. Nice receive by Layla Seitz. Back row attack. Good approach for Katherine Krause to come in in the, the defensive hole. Now Menner sets. That was Martin to send that ball wide and out. First four points of the set go to Kaleida. Huber continues to serve. And there's Seitz dug out by new libero, Carly Siefger. She swapped in during that last timeout. All right, another block in the front, or excuse me, that one came through on the Kaleida side and down. So St. John's with their first score of the new set. And Elena Martin will serve it. Outside for Romas. Big cross-court swing and just out. Big swing is correct, and she really was trying to get it down inside the 10-foot line and wasn't able to do so. Missed the sideline as well. And she'll receive the serve from Martin. There's a tap it over, and Kerner from her knees tries to keep that ball alive. And a call her ball handling air. Yep, prolonged contact was the call. Star to serve it. Goes over. And how about that? A little ping pong action in the front row, and St. John's able to finish it off. Madeline Conley has two kills in this set. That's her sixth of the match. 
In a lineup change for the Blue Jays, Ella Martz into the game. Ella's a freshman that will play in the front row now. There's a kill from Olivia Meyer. Her first of the day. And a couple of changes in the Kaleida lineup. Izzy Rucker, Kendall Krause will enter. I believe this is going to be a record to drop and serve. And she will. And long serve. First time they've missed a serve today. Very clean and sound at all phases are the Wildcats. So it all starts in that serve game. And they're going to go back to Romas. Another good attack. She, sure. got, she got three of their seven points, Garrett. Now she serves. And she's lethal from back here as well. And that is a collegiate serve. And another ace. Well into the 20s on those here in the 2024 campaign. Two today. She's had 23 coming into today's tournament. Over spin again. <laughs> a lot of front spin to get it to drop down, and that's going to force a timeout. So the first set loss, and Kaleida rebounds with a vengeance, and that forces a timeout early by St. John's. We'll take it to 9 4. Be back from Kaleida after this. Presenting sponsor for the Pioneer Days Volleyball Invitational is the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all of your banking and financial needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Impressive beginning to the second set for Kaleida looking to even this match. The St. John's with a one set to none lead. Already opting for that timeout to try to regroup. But the beat goes on for the Kaleida Wildcats, up 10-4. Good pass and a good set to put the ball where Adeline Huber could use it. Her fourth kill of the day for the sophomore. Malia Romas will continue her turn, starting the, the rally. And that was just a line drive. And Connolly serves into the net, goes to 11 for Kaleida. Uh, they were there for the block, but I think it was in, into the tape and fell on the side of St. John's, so I'm not sure they were going to give credit for a block on that. Roma's service been really good here. And with that sinking action, it's just hard to let go. It's, it's tempting to let something... Wow, tremendous play by Avery Altenberger. Almost dropped that down, but a good hustle for Elena Martin. Kaleida rallies to the ball there, and a big hit for Sophie Vorst, and she finds some space on the left end. Sophie's first kill to the day. That was a really good rally on the part of Kaleida. Kept the St. John's on their heels throughout the entire point. One of the longer volleys of the second set. Received by Aleda Martin. Outside for Layla Seitz. Great dig. Carly Seifger, but it's going to go over. Now she'll pass. Back row attack for Romas. Going to go outside. Tough angle for Kendall Krause. And, you know, really she only had one play, and that was to tap it over, and St. John's couldn't return it. Kalina has really come to life with Romas serving oh. here. She really got the tone set. From where she started the set in the front row, a couple of kills, blocks, got back to serving, and that big long rally is going to come to an end right here. But Kaleida has gotten over halfway to evening up a set apiece. Yeah, Adeline Huber just mistimed that hit, ended that very lengthy point rally. There's going to be an ace. Goes in there for Madeline Conley, Carly Seifker trying to. Send that to one side or the other. Her 13th ace of the year for Madeline. There Huber receives. She's going to get the pass here on the attack. Blocked up front. Grace Monner. Excuse me, that was Ella Martz. 
Yeah, there were a pair of them there, but I think you're right. I think Martin was the one who got the, the clean part of the block. Romas from the back, too long. Today, Romas has struggled when she's tried to, to put kills action from behind the 10-foot line. Her coach takes a timeout. Seeing the Blue Jays make a rally, we'll pause for the, the break and return for our second set from Kaleida on WOSN. Welcome back to Kaleida, where it is the second set. Our first match of our coverage today, semifinal match between Kaleida and Delphi St. John's. St. John's took the first set, 25-22, and Kaleida with a feverish start to the second set. However, it is starting to teeter back towards the Blue Jays. Kaleida won a touch on that. None of the officials or line judges had it. And they go for Olivia Vorst, and it's not going to make it over the net. Four hits on Kaleida. And now Madeline Conley for a long turn serving for Romas during the second set. Now it's Conley mm. that's helping St. John's with a rally. Here's Vorst. And through the hands of the libero Altenberger, trying to set that one up from the back end. That was touched at the net, and again by the libero. I might have thrown the libero mm -hmm. off a little bit when it was touched at the net. Here's Sophie Vorst to serve. And that's going to go wide to the right. It's two missed serves in this set for Kaleida after not having mm -hmm. a missed serve in the opening set. Kerner enters to serve. Dug out by Carly Seifger, and now here's Huber. Kept alive at the net by St. John's. Outside for Strahr. Now Romas receives. Attack for Huber, big old hit. And score for the Wildcats. Very persistent play that time. Huber had a shot at it, so did Strauer. And then the set by uh, Izzy Recker that time put it right up where Huber could put it away for her second kill of this set and fifth of the match. Here's Catherine Krause next. And too long. Layla Seitz next to serve for St. John's. And that one off the side of the hand. I thought that might not have been her typical toss. The whole thing just looked a little bit uh, out of sync. Andrea pass for Monner. And Seitz nicely dug out by Huber. And there's a block on the attack from Martin. Romus and company in to reject it and send it back. Now Kaleidas closing in, still a five-point advantage as this race to 25 continues. And the contact at the net as it went through. Kayla Bining getting credit for the kill. Kayla's third today. Now, Leda Martin serving for St. John's. Way outside of Romas. Tapped over by Conley. Short set, Romas recovers. And the play's whistle dead. They're going to get a Wildcat in the net. Called Olivia Meyer for being in the net. Another good serve for St. John's. Here's Romas. Look out. And tack another one on for Kaleida. The best set she's had in set number two. And she certainly knows what to do it when she gets a good set like that one. Serve there for Strauer. 
And whether that was going to make it over or not, Romas was there to make sure it, was, it wouldn't. 19-14. They set a lot of Layla sights a lot when she's in the back row. That time from behind the 10-foot line, she couldn't score. That's going to be an ace. Rally keeps going for Kaleida as we hit, they hit 20. Time for a timeout for Delphi St. John's. We'll step out also watching high school volleyball from Kaleida on WOSN. 2014 on that Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Kaleida looking to even the match up to a set apiece. And a, what would be a best of three match. The Wildcats finish what they've started here. Service Air gives the Serve back to St. John's. They'll get Ella Martz into the game before the serve for Grace Monner. Timeout worked, broke the momentum, got a serve error. St. John's has timed their timeouts extremely well today. It happened late in the first set, led to that 25-22 win. Romas has six kills in each set for 12 today. That set was not as high as she would like it. So by the time she contacted the ball, it got into the tape and just rolled across the net. Serve goes in for Kaleida. Going to go out for Sophie Vorst. Sights from behind the 10-foot line again. And short on the attack, 22-15 now. Izzy Wrecker remains back to serve. Seed by Avery Altenberger. Hit by Madeline Conley. Kaleida couldn't send it back over. St. John's has just five kills in this set. Three of them have come from Conley. Altenberger serves it. Back set for Romas. Nice dig for Grace Monner. Kaleida regroups offensively. Sophie Vorst pats it over the top. And Altenberger finds a space in the middle. Kaleida rotated out of position. and Good play for the libero. You see that open spot on the floor. Surprised with a bit rather than set. You push it over. Serves back up, and Ricochet is off of Vorst. Going deep in this second set. 22-18, quite a start for Kaleida. St. John's has found their rhythm again. Bonner outside for Sites, and gonna go long. Checking for touches there after that. Attack. After five kills in the opening set, Sites does not have a kill in this set. She missed the back line that time. That's received by St. John's, and Huber dumps it down, and it's set point for Kaleida. Just like they began their big rally here in this set, Romas to serve, and now she has a chance to serve set point. Altenberger. Kalina keeps it in the air. Can they rally? It's going to be short. Good effort, though. Seifert did a good job tracking that one down before it got into the bleachers. Serve for Madeline Conley. Set for Huber. And we're even at one set apiece. Adeline Huber finishes off set number, one, set number two. And we're all square. Decisive third set coming your way next on WOSN. Back at Kaleida, third set of our semifinal between Kaleida and Delphi St. John's. Our presenting sponsor for the Invitational here during Pioneer Days. The State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all of your banking and financial service needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. St. John's takes the serve. Here to start our third set. And it's going to go 
as an ace to start it. 25-22, 25-19. 26 kills in the match total for Kaleida. 12 of them by Malia Romas. Seven for Huber at this point in. Off-balance attack from Meyer, but it does the job. And that's going to go through the wickets on the attack for Great or Kayla Binick. Got it here with another kill for the for the match. Delphi St. John's has 20 kills on the day, seven of them by Madeline Connolly, five by Layla Seitz, but all of those came in the opening set. Here's Romus. And Huber. Had an opening in that front left corner and deflected it down. So it's going to give the Wildcats their first score of the set. And Huber made a play. Now she serves. Big block. Here's Binding again, blocked. And Monarch keeps things going. Binding again, now too long. Got it past that front row of attack, but couldn't keep it in bounds. They kept setting her three times in a row. The third one finally went long. Now two apiece. And that's going to get over and fall down for St. John's. Madeline Connolly. Now the nine for one swap. Means Ella March will enter. Megan Kerner sits down as they rotate through. Big hit for Romus. And we're all square at three. Really good pass that time. You can see she you know, patted her teammates, slapped hands with them. Really good pass that set that up for Romus to put the kill away. Free Strahl on the serve for Kaleida. Another block up front. Actually, they're going to say it didn't clear, so It'll be an attack air on the Blue Jays. Binding shot didn't get over the tape. If it was, it was going to be blocked by mm -hmm. Romas, probably. She was right there with her hands. Serve air for Strahr. Second service air for her. She also has two aces today. Avery Altenberger serving it up now for the Blue Jays. And the attack. Kept alive for the Blue Jays. Now Carly Seifer and a Huber attack into the net. And this, this set continues to describe this match, Mark, just yeah. right back and exactly. forth. Go back and forth we go. It's 5-4 St. John's as they serve. Here's the attack for Romus. It's dug out, goes over, but out. It'll be a kill for now. 5-5. Five, five. She's such a presence in the front row. She can obviously kill the ball. She has a lot of blocks. And also, she takes a double blockers with her sometimes, which frees up Huber to get a shot. Here's Izzy Wrecker serving. And too long on the return. He has collided the upper hand here. Avery Altenberger upset with herself. Played it correctly, just hit it long. Long set for Sines, or Sites, and she finished that one off strong. Yeah, there you go. The first kill since she's had in the opening set. Got that one. A lot of times she was set in behind the 10-foot line in the opening in the second set. That time she got a good set in the front row. Romus with the finesse. Now Menner sets. And collision for Kaleida in the middle. Talked about it many times, Garrett. I'm surprised that doesn't happen more often in volleyball. A couple of players going for the ball. They get tangled up a little bit. Neither one of them can get up and make a play. Ace. That gives Delphi St. John's a two-point advantage, about as big as it, either side has been out in this third set. Conley's second ace of the day. 15th of the season. 
There's Romus, had to improvise a bit. Altenberger's much better play at that time. Romus. How about that? Connolly made a really good effort, but the ball got into the tape a little bit and kind of threw off her timing to get to it. And that's going to go long. After three aces today, that's Roma's first mm -hmm. missed serve. Here's Megan Kerner to serve now for St. John's. Blue Jays by two in the third set. Winner here is our first berth to the championship match. And Adeline Huber converts the attack for Kaleida. So difficult to do that, legally get a block and then get your hands down underneath the ball and pop it back up in the air without having prolonged contact. And that was the call that time. So Carly Siefker serving. Banged over by Seitz. Uh, Strar dug out by Seitz. They're going to set her back up. Nice monitor all over the floor for St. John's. And so he just dumped over the top for Kaleida. Seitz on a long pass. Kaleida keeps it in the air. Star pushes over. And did that get between that, the antennas? I think so. Uh, I did not. Okay. Ball was outside yep. the antenna. Really good effort that time, but couldn't get it from that angle to go inside the antenna. Hence the point that ties yep. it at nine. Kills the points, and Seifker serves again. A little long, but it's met by Madeline Conley, and now Martin fires a strike. St. John's by one again. Her fourth kill. She's had two in the opening set, one in each set since then. Now Seitz will serve. Two kills when she was in the front row, and now back to serve. Stars attack dug out by Kerner. There go back her direction. Dig by Seitz. And Kerner just has to push it over. Here's Huber, and she lands the attack to even us up at 10. Really good play by Grace Mentor to try to save the ball and set a teammate up. But Clyde ends up with the point. Here's Krause to serve. Last serve by Katherine Krause for Kaleida. Set and the attack. And Strahr gets a deflection and a score for Kaleida now. Just her second kill of the day. Came at a good time to put her team up one. Played well in other areas. A couple of aces today on the service line. Passed ball well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Didn't think that made it over. Good back set by Katherine Krause, but her teammate wasn't able to connect to score. It's a good time to surprise your opponent. Just didn't get it across. Now Lena Martin. Met by Seifger. Outside for Meyer again. Kept alive by the Blue Jays. Monner sets for Seitz yeah, and drops her, it. Got her a point from behind the 10-foot line. She was a back row player. Eighth kill for her today. Next up is Martin. And serve is too strong. Now we're even again at 12. Becomes a 13 point match. Let's see what we got here because it looked like Conley well, the line judge called it in. The R2 called it out. And that kind of overrides what the line judge says. And so it will yep. be collide a ball and a point. 
So here's Huber with Coletta up one. Sites receives. She'll attack from the back. And the dig goes into the net, but well done. Romas just kind of had to re salvage the, the rally for Kaleida, and it turns into a two-point lead and a timeout taken by St. John's. We'll step out as well. Third set, almost halfway, a little over halfway gone here on WOSN. Kaleida with a two-point advantage here in the third set. Winner moves on to the championship match of the Pioneer Days Volleyball Invitational at Kaleida. Delphi St. John's and the Wildcats going right back and forth. And Malia Romas continues to rack up the scoring for the Wildcats. Altenberger made a dive for it, but just placed the ball in a perfect spot. Good vision from Romas. Your sights. <laughs> Couldn't quite get it over the top. And Chris Menner says, yep. I got it over. Yep. But yeah, but that was for hit number four. It's a four-point lead. Good serve from Huber. And she converts an ace. Second ace for her today. Good all-around sophomore player. I like to watch her play. And a miss hit on the receive and another ace for Kaleida. The Cats starting to get in rhythm. Back to back. Attack for Seitz, it's low, and it's gonna stay with Kaleida. And another timeout for the Blue Jays. 19-12, another, right now a 7-0 run for Kaleida. We'll be back after this on WOSN. Kaleida on a roll here in this third set. All square at one set apiece. Winner of this set moves on to the championship match a little later on today. And we're going to get a Blue Jays with a score. When Seifker dove for the ball, she went across the center line, hence the violation. That ends a 7-0 run for the Wildcats. Grace Monner with the serve. Here's Romas. And that's going to go into the net. Until she immediately said, my fault. She knew she had a good set. Hit the ball into the net. You've got 17 kills. You can miss one once yep. in a while if you want. Oh, what do we got? Ace. Huber, yeah, Huber and Steve <laughs> here get tied up and lands on that back line. Grace Mentor with her first ace of the day, and you could tell just a little miscommunication. That's going to go out the back end. After the attack for Romes again. Clyde of the first to 20. And with that, they'll bring in Camden Warnicky. That set was a little bit off the net, and Romes was still able to get the kill out of it. First action of the match for Warnicky. And he's going to go wide left. They're going to get Reese Strauer back into the contest to play the defensive end. That is so hard to do. You've sat there now for two and a half, almost three full sets before you get your opportunity to play, and she just missed it from the sideline. Romas from the middle, big hit. Makes it 21-16. The Wildcats starting to feel it. Inching closer. And they'll get two new into the match. Izzy Wrecker, Kendall Krause. Kendall Krause comes in to play the front row. She's on a string with Katherine Krause, who plays the back row. Pushed over by Altenberger. Dumped over. Now Menner for Seitz. Dug out by Huber. Here's Sophie Vorst on the attack. Now Layla Seitz. Nice diving dig. Now Menner sets up for Conley. And deflected by Kaleida. Blue Jays hanging around. 
5'11", junior Madeline Conley now has nine kills today. That one came at a good time. Her team's down four here. Serve is in. There's the hit for Kendall Kraus, dug out by Menner in the back row. And Robles just with the third hit over the head. Layla Seitz got a fingertip at the net and a little bit more in the net for Kaleida. Robles was the call. Official signal number 10, and we're going to get a little conversation. Head coach Kayla Matthew asked for a clarification and got it from the referee. Back set to Romas, punished, 22-18. 20th kill, this is eighth one here in this set. Now she will go back to serve, try to close this one out for her team to send them to the finals. Here St. John's recovers after a shaky receive. And Huber hits it hard, but the Blue Jays send it back. And there's Sophie Vorst. She's been solid in that left front. She really has. That's her third kill today, but she's put a lot of balls in play from that spot. Two points shy of clinching the match for Kaleida. Blue Jays with their backs against the wall now. And Seitz is able to keep the ball in the air. She'll back row attack this and blocked by Huber. Huber, who had the set point in the second set to force the third. I'm getting knocked right over. She now has 10 kills on the day. Notice Romus has changed her serve. She doesn't throw the ball as high, get as much top spin on it. And, and she still yep. gets an ace. That's match points. The ace. 25-18. Kaleida will have a chance to win their host tournament. They are into the finals. We'll carry that match and we'll see who they'll play next. Liberty Benton Fairview, stick around. We'll have more volleyball action coming your way on WOSN. Hello and welcome to Kaleida High School. The Pioneer Days Volleyball Invitational rolls on. Another semifinal match for you here today. Liberty Benton, the Eagles out of the Blanchard Valley Conference and the Green Meadows Conference represented by the Fairview Apaches. Garrett Mansfield next to Mark Shine. And this is two teams, phenomenal years last season. They lock horns, retool a little bit for this year and be an exciting one to see down here. Well, you know, this is a Liberty Benton team that is uncharacteristically three and three. Now they play a, a tremendous schedule and that's part of the reason why their record is what it is. But uh, it's a very talented team. They won their 51st consecutive BBC matchup the other night and certainly will be very competitive here today. They'll get a chance to take on the 6-0 Fairview Apaches here to start the match. And Liberty Benson will serve first. Get you the starters for both sides here as Aubrey Hammer gets things started for Fairview. She's joined out there by Kenna Kaufman, Abby Smith, Patience McDaniel, and Elizabeth Bach in the libero Liberty Vogel song. Here as Hammer sends the ball in, and it won't be returned by the Eagles. But Hammer gets a kill, and then she gets an ace. Excuse me, the wrong number, doesn't it? No, it is number three. Okay. Serve goes in. For Fairview, there is the attack. Cora DeHart get credit for the kill for Liberty Benson. Josie Todd, Ellie Norman, Cora DeHart, DeHart Lindsay May, Megan Gherkin, Emily Ike are the starters along with Maddie Amstutz, the libero for Liberty Benton. Set cross court for Patience McDaniel, dug out by Alyssa Roberts in there. And return, Lindsay May finds a chance to get that. She's the leading attacker for the Lady Eagles. Three and a half kills a set. Lindsay was a third team all-conference player in the Blanchard Valley Conference a year ago. Has 69 kills before today's matches. Here's Alyssa Roberts on the serve. 
And that's going to be pried down by Vogelsong, but not going to get back over top. Roberts has 10 aces and now 11. Here's Kaufman, a back set for Abby Smith. She's going to get credit for the kill there. Liberty Benton was in the other gymnasium or St. Michael's. They defeated Allen East there in their opening match today, 25-18 and 25-10 to get to this point. Serve for Vogelsong, received by Amstutz. There's going to be the kill for Dehart for Fairview. They lost their first set of the day in this gym to Bath, 23-25, but then rallied back. 25-10 and had an exciting third set, 25-21. Now the two matches we've been able to check out so far, Mark, they've gone the distance. We've had no quick ones in the main gym today. That's correct, and of course, Fairview being 5-0 and 1-0 and in the GMC. Big challenge, Liberty Benton here. Yep. Fairview, a, as that's gonna be a cross-court attack, just us sneak in. Fairview, a Division Three program. And just to the just to the west of Defiance. Really collide a pretty decent halfway mark between the two schools here that really wouldn't play each other for any other reason than, than being here. As Apache's get a kill there. I didn't think in the opening game, uh, Fairview looked particularly uh, skillful, uh, not skillful, uh, prepared, I guess, in the opening set when they lost 25-23. They have come out playing very well in this set, first set of this match. There's an ace for Kenna Kaufman. That Chloe Panico in there as well for Fairview up front, along with Asia Brubaker. Another ace back-to-back -back for Kenna Kaufman. Usually back in the leading setter for this team. Now Liberty Benton looking to rally. Emily Eink launches long out the back end. That didn't get on top of the ball and drove it behind the end line. A block, Asia Brubaker, the junior. Keeps the theme going for Fairview. If you just looked at size, as far as height, Fairview would be at a disadvantage, but they have played well at the net so far. And there's a big hit from Lindsey May. Lindsey May is listed at 5'10". That's her third kill. Corey DeHart listed at 6'1", the sophomore. Allie Hawkinson checks in. And Emily Ike listed at 6'3". She wears number 16. Serve in from Josie Todd. Mishandled by Fairview to stay on the Eagles side. A Liberty Benton program. Well, actually, both programs in front of us won tw over 20 matches last year. 20 and 5. 8 no BBC champs again for Liberty Benton. Fell in the district final to Shawnee. Fairview, on the other hand, one of the better programs north of our viewing area, or I guess the, the northern portion. Emily Eink drops that one on the near side. Really good set that time from Todd, and she drove it straight down. Eink's first kill of the day. She had 33 coming into today. Tied up at eight apiece on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Cross score for Patience McDaniel. There was a, the net bounced. But it was not via player. So that's going to go out on the Apaches. Fairview's body of work from last season as they back to their strong, strong showing. 6-0 start to the year. 24-3 last season. Got to regionals and fell to Huron. And they've won also three of the last four Green Meadows Conference titles. Big hit. Coming from Lindsey May, but it a little too strong. Called out. Lindsey thought somebody touched it at the net. Not a call from any of our four officials, the two officials and two line judges. So here's McDaniel to serve. 
Yeah, just hit the top of the net, rolled over, and not much you can do to defend there. Her turn continues. There's not a drill for that one nope. where you can practice that. Set for Hawkinson, dug out by Kaufman, and Fairview rallies well to the ball. Josie Todd is setting up Lindsey May, and she drops it on in, the senior. Josie Todd had 179 assists coming into today's action. Got one right there, too. Now it's her turn to serve. Received by McDaniel. Long pass for Haley, or for Aubrey Hammer. Ike attacks, and a little too much. Good power. Strong to hit the ball through a defender. Her second kill already. Eight kills so far out of 11 points for Liberty Benton. Aubrey Hammer touches it over. Set up for Megan Gherkin. There's a set for Ike, and she drops one. Back to that kills for her. 11 all. You know, I spoke earlier about Fairview being strong at the net despite their size disadvantage. Well, that size disadvantage is now showing up as Liberty Benton really hammering the ball at the net. Got to get the scoreboard squared away. As for who is home and away, there they got it. Set up for Hammer and got under that a touch. Liberty Benton rolling to the last couple of points to take a three-point advantage. Next serve goes in. And that's tapped over for Panico. And that will halt the little run for the Eagles. And now Fairview, their turn to serve. And Brooklyn Zedike checks in and rotates around. Serve goes in, received by May. And that's a bad set, but I think Liberty Benton didn't really plan for that as Gherkin comes in and makes something out of a, a tough pass. Yes, she really did. Took the ball back to her left a bit instead of going cross court. Here's the surfer, Maddie Amstutz. So the air there for the Lady Eagles serving. And stay Panico now to serve. And Amstutz, an unconventional receive. Here's Kenna Kaufman setting for Hammer, and she went to go with the changeup. Didn't get it over the, the top end. She wanted it to go softly to the other side of the court, but she left it a little bit short. Ayla Singer checks in for Fairview. She'll tuck into this back corner, awaiting the serve from Liberty Benson. Ellen, Ellie Norman did the honors. Good play by the libero Amstutz. Kaufman and sets another up one. Abby Smith, and the Eagles keep it off the floor. Oh. Hammer. Not with the power on that one, but able to get it done. Haven't seen her get really open and, and hit hard like she's capable of doing. There's Gherkin, taps it over for Liberty Benton. Set for Patience McDaniel, and she'll get the touch out. Fairview will keep the serve. Her second kill. Her team has seven of their 14 points for kills so far. That's going to go out the boundary. Liberty Benton changes their lineup. Melissa Roberts enters. It's her turn to serve. She plays the back row, and Megan Gherkin plays the front row. 
in their rotation. That's going to turn into a Fairview point, the 50-50 ball. Kenna Kaufman up against Todd to decide the, the score. Now Fairview's tightened it back up to a one-point set. Serve from Vogelsong is good. And there, Cora Dehart just gets open and sees a big opening on the defensive side. Starts with the pass, but then the set was really good as well. <laughs> Dehart's turn to, to serve. And they're going to get two touches on the setter, Josie Todd. Well, it's called a quadrant. They divide your body into quadrants, and you cannot push the ball with your hands from one quadrant through the other quadrant. And that's what happened. She pushed it from the left side of her face through the right side of her face. That was the call list. Big hit from Lindsey May, but it's wide. Fairview just keeps playing. 17-all mm -hmm. now. All right, big block up front. The tandem of Panico and Brubaker, but it is returned. Looked like May was the one that deflected that for Liberty Benson. She had to look at the line judge to make sure it got inside the line, and it did. <laughs> Serve goes in. Kaufman to McDaniel. Patient's attack is dug out by Matty Amstutz. And now here's Brubaker, another diving attack for a diving dig for Amstutz and turns into an Emily Eink attack. Emily hit it just to the back, in the back corner there. No one was anybody there to play it. Really good eyes and vision to put the ball in that particular spot. Off a little bit of a different angle from the set. Eagles with a two-point advantage here as we get into the twilight of this first set. Winner here gets Kaleida in the championship match. There's a big block up front. This time, Allie Hawkinson. And timeout as Coach Chilick for Fairview wants to talk this one over at the 2017 mark. We'll take the timeout also here on WOSN. Back at Kalina, where Liberty Benson holds a slight edge over Fairview as we inch back to the end of the first set. Apache's trying to Old court here, and they do just that. They respond after the timeouts, and anything we've seen today, Mark, we've seen good execution from the sideline on when to take these timeouts and how to respond out of the break. We went 36 points before they had 37 points before we had a timeout in that uh, this set. That's how closely contested it was. Here's Hammer. Good adjustment. She went in there to really hit, but once she saw Ike get over. Knew she had to pop it over. A lot of size up there for Liberty Benson. And Panico was called in the net. That was that call. Yep. With that, that brings Lindsey May to serve. And a service error. They don't have a ton, just 38 through their first six matches. And as a team, they serve over 90%. Two errors today, but also two aces in this opening set. Brooklyn Zedike. And a hard first pass. Fairview does recover and send it over. And a block up front. Haley Hammer gets involved there. And it's a one point set. Now Zedike's turn to serve the sophomore. Good play by Kaufman before that ball was headed over the net. She's a back row player, so she couldn't play it over the net, instead got it back where a teammate could use it, and they eventually won the point. That's their second miss serve yep. in the set. Another set with both teams in the 20s. 
Good volleyball here at Kaleida today. And have a wheelhouse ball for DeHart, but Fairview keeps it going. Here she goes again, and she lands that one in front of McDaniel. DeHart, the number two in terms of total kills for Liberty Benton coming into play, but she's their most efficient. She hits 331. And there's an ace from Ann Stutz, and that hitting percentage and kill percentage where they differ is that your hitting percentage, it takes your attack errors away. So you, you kind of get a different a different number there. And so players that have a high kill percentage but fewer errors are going to have a higher percentage, whereas if you get a lot of kills but you make a lot of mistakes too, well, that's where that number will be closer to zero. And Liberty Benton closes out the first set with a 25-20 victory. But Fairview, they recovered the first time, or their, their first match of the day. We'll see how set two fares in our semifinal match of the Pioneer Day Volleyball Invite from Kaleida next on WOSN. Kalina set two between the Fairview Apaches, Liberty Benton Eagles. Eagles took the first set by a score of 25-20. And Fairview already been in this position today. Try to recover here, but the Eagles get the first point of the set. In set number one, Fairview had 10 kills. They had four aces and two missed serves. Liberty Benton had 16 kills. They had three aces and two missed serves. Five kills apiece for Cora DeHart, Lindsay May. Three apiece for Aubrey Hammer and Patience McDaniel. And McDaniel on the attack. It's dug out by the Eagles. But the point's going to go to yeah. Fairview on a lift. Same thing we had earlier. Ball went from the left side of her face to the right side of her face while she was contacting the ball with both hands. On the run, it was a difficult play for Todd to make. And got the call go against her. Fairview couldn't keep that off the floor. That one gets by Elizabeth Bach. And here's Cora DeHart to serve it. Strong first set out of the sophomore, but a service error. Evens are scored to two apiece, and it's Kenna Kaufman who wears two to serve. You know, Garrett, usually I look at numbers to see who's who. I think for Liberty Benton, I look at shoe color. Yeah. <laughs> All are unique. Can't, can't do that on the Fairview side. Everybody's uniform. Kaufman sets for Brubaker, blocked by Eink, and it continues. Now McDaniel. Excuse me, that was uh, Aubrey Hammer. Vogelson with the dig. Long pass to Patience McDaniel, and she lands it. Leads the team at over four kills per set. Of course, at WSN, our number one shoe guy is Evan Skilleter. <laughs> Hopefully, Evan will be able to see this and give some comment on shoe apparel today for the Eagles. Hammer keeps the attack from Eink over, but broke that center line, Kenna Kaufman. Difficult play. That ball got right to the net. She had to go and try to make a play for it. Wasn't sure whether she stepped over that center line or whether she brushed the net with her shoulder. Either way, the violation goes against her. Off a difficult pass for her to play. Serve in for Liberty Benson. It comes from, comes from Josie Todd. And there, Chloe Panico. On the attack air. And Todd's next serve, received by Aubrey Hammer. Kaufman long set for McDaniel, dug out by May. Now they're going to go back to May. And she hammers that one down, couldn't be handled by Vogelsong. It's a really good play. The pass was good. The set from Todd was good. Of course, the put away back near the end line. Really good play for Liberty Benton that time. A couple of veterans, May and Todd. 
Todd serves it back in. And McDaniel with a big swing. See if Liberty Benton can recover this. They do indeed. Goes to Brubaker, she just shoves it over. Now uh, Amstutz, back set for May. Nice diving dig by Kaufman and she'll just tap it over. Alyssa Roberts keeps it in the air. And they have one to give. Good job by the Apaches. And Brubaker found an open hole. That's a heads up play right there in the front. There were a lot of difficult plays in that particular point. Including the play at the net by Panico, who was able to block and then hit without getting called for double contact because she played it correctly. Now set for Hammer. Now to Panico. Cross court dug out by Todd. Kaufman set for Brubaker, and man, she had to really reach for that one. It was not timed up well. But the Apache is able to get the point out of it. And she has her second kill of this set and the third of today by making that really nice play there. Patience McDaniel will serve now for Fairview. And she's going to get an ace. Patience's second ace today. She had 11 coming into today's action here in Kaleida. Third hit goes over for Liberty Benson, but cannot keep it within the within the tape. Yeah, you see Alyssa Roberts mad at herself because she knew she just had to free ball over to the back part of the line and just couldn't get it there. And disappointed how she performed. There's a kill for Emily Eink. 6'3 senior, got a good set, her sixth kill today. She's Gherkin back in to play the front row as she's on a string with Alyssa Roberts. Danico, that goes down for Fairview. Lady Apaches with a two point advantage. As Brooklyn Zedike enters to do the honors. She plays the back row. Asia Brubaker's the front row player in that rotation. Megan Gherkin slaps it over the net. Outside to Haley Hammer, and she goes with one of the first big swings of this match. And we see why she hasn't really been able to do that. It's all that size that has been drifting over for Liberty Benton. Ike with the block next to Gherkin. Attack for McDaniel. Now Todd to DeHart. McDaniel just gets a hand under that to keep it alive. And what a play in the backside. Allie Hawkinson used every inch of that back corner. Her second kill, but that point was really well played on both sides. A lot of good digs to get the ball up to a pass and a kill attempt. Goes over for Fairview. Here's Gherkin. That's going to go off of McDaniel and out. Early in that point, DeHart was close to being over the net to make a play, but I think the ball got into the, into the plane of the net before she played it. She was there along with the, the setter, Kaufman. Here's Gherkin. And line judge had to really think about that one. It was close. Yeah, it really looked at it, and our official, Ann Ellerbrock, looked at it also. Was there a touch? And asked both line judges and her partner. Nobody had a touch either, so really good piece of officiating there. Panico serves. Received by Hawkinson. 
And we got a fair view in the net. Yeah. Caught Kaufman. Talked about Ann Ellerbrock, the official. Those of us who follow volleyball across Northwest Ohio know she was the very successful coach at Ottawa Glandor for many, many years. Got into officiating a few years back and does a really good job. Serve goes up for Ellie Norman. This would be tapped over by Abby Smith. Now the Eagles got a rally. Kaufman to McDaniel. Finesse attack. Goes with the changeup and drops her home. Paces McDaniels is just a very smart player. Just a junior, but she seems to always have a good feel for where the ball should be go and with the pace she needs to put on it. Third hit and uh, Dehart into the net. She did not have her approach steps correct. The pass was a little bit closer to the sideline than she anticipated. As received by Liberty Benson. Hammered over and blocked up front by Fairview, Abby Smith. Well-timed play by Abby and she kept it in the field of play. All of a sudden her team's up two. Aubrey Hammer. Seen by Amstutz. Now DeHart attacks, dug by Hammer. And nobody in the middle. That's where DeHart just places that one in. After five kills in the opening set, that's Cora's first in this particular set. You saw Jenna Kaufman, who is a front row player now, try to get a spike attempt, a kill attempt, and not successful, but she's allowed to do that now since she's a front row player. See the set right there. And Smith just with two attempts at the net for Fairview. And 50-50 ball, gonna be won by Liberty Benson. The left-handed play at the beginning of that by Lindsey May. Really a difficult play, even though she didn't get a point out of it, put their team in a good position to eventually score the point. And McDaniel answers right back. What I talked about a moment ago, just knowing where to put the ball and how hard she needs to hit it. Sixth kill in this match for her. There's Lindsey May finds another one for the Eagles. Really good set that time by Josie Todd. She was on the far right side of her team's offense and got it all over to the left side where her teammate could put the ball away. Here's Jillian Roberts. She'll serve it in. And that just went right into the wheelhouse for Emily Eink. And she drives that one down into the floor. The serve by the left-handed Roberts was really good, so the ball only way to do it just try to get it up in the air, but it got it too far and got it over the net, and there was Eink to have her eighth kill. There's a good kill for Asia Brubaker. Back to 14 all. Two blockers there, but by the time they contacted the ball, their hands were behind the net, and the ball fell on the side of Liberty Benton. May on the attack. Dug by Kaufman. Now Vogelson had to keep it up before Hammer sends it over for Fairview. Ike attacks. And... Looks like it went wide to this near side. She likes to come back. She, she, instead of going cross court, she comes back to the same side of court she just came from. And that time, she missed the sideline with it. Huge hit for Lindsey May. Ninth kill for her in halfway through this set. And once again, Garrett, nobody's went on a big, long run. So we played 30 points, and neither team has felt a need to take a timeout. Yeah, very similar to that first set. Mm -hmm. I think we got 37 points in the opening yep. set before we had a timeout. 
Serve goes in. And some miscommunication on the receive, and that's going to be enough to force it for Fairview. 16-5, Liberty Benson. They get this set. The match would be closed. We'll take the timeout as well and return to Kaleida on WOSN. Out of the Fairview timeout, Liberty Benson with a one-point advantage. Patience McDaniel answers right back to the well-timed stoppage for Fairview. Gets the serve right back. I don't think that timeout was because of a run. I think the timeout was you, we miscommunicated on one. We're, we're down 16-15, and let's just get, regroup a little bit after the miscommunication, and they did so. Now I am stunts over for Liberty Benson. Set for Panico. Now here's May. Kaufman sets up Hammer on that left side. Kept alive by the Eagles. Now Eink, full head of steam, and drops her in. That set was not particularly high, but well-timed by Eink to get on top of it and get it down. Again, she actually comes back to her left when she kills the ball, and that time she did so successfully. Emily Eich has nine kills today, as does Lindsey May. And Hammer, too strong on the attack for Fairview. Didn't get on top of it that time, as she has her other kills today. And a service error on May. Back to a one-point game. And Liberty Benson with a one-set advantage. This is best of three in this Invitational. And Eink gets that one to fall in front of Zedai. I'm not sure she got a, a good swing at that one. She didn't hit the ball as hard as she usually does, but got it in a good spot. Serve goes in for Fairview, or for Liberty Benson. Now Vogelsong with a long pass for Hammer. She's blocked. Fairview keeps it alive. Here's the next pass. Ooh, it almost let that one fall to the floor again. And a block in the middle for Fairview. Abby Smith. Maybe Apaches. Right there, they could use a couple in a row. Neither team can get a long run. It's a point or two or three is the best anybody can do in this second set. Big hit and in. Lindsey May comes through for the Eagles. That might be her first kill from behind the 10 foot that, that time. And she's got a good drive to the back right corner. Now Ellie Norman will serve it up for the Eagles. Get late in the second set. Here's Hammer from the right this time. And Gherkin's attack is disrupted. And another st stoppage at the net for Fairview. Abby Smith, the senior, has been played very consistently when she's in the front row. And DR dug out by Hammer. Over to McDaniel. It's going to be an overball. Now Smith. Couldn't quite get that one over. Tried to slide around the center and make a play from her right side, and was unsuccessful in trying to do so. It just goes back. It's one point, it's two points. It's one point, it's two points. Here's Hammer, and block right up front. Cora Dehart. A force in the middle right now. Seventh kill for her today. That's a three-point lead for Liberty Benton. A low line drive serve. McDaniel has to bump it. Now here's DeHart again, but I think that got over. That's a Liberty, Liberty Benson 
kill. Josie Todd launched that set. And Fairview was no expecting reaction. somebody hit the ball hard, and nobody did on the overpass, and instead of falling on the floor. Here's McDaniel. Back to her and into the net. Match point here for the Eagles. And Fairview, previously unblemished record in jeopardy here. They have a timeout and chose not to use it. Vogel song received, tipped over, and that's going to go in to the near side stands and end this match. A two set sweep for Liberty Benson. 25 19. They hand Fairview their first defeat of the season and improve to four and three. It'll be the Eagles and Kaleida Wildcats playing for the Pioneer Days Volleyball Invitational title. 30 kills for Liberty Benton in that two-set match and really evenly balanced. Emily Eink had 10 of them. Lindsey May had 10 of them. Cord Hart had eight. So really good balance that time across the front row. We'll step out of this one. It concludes this contest. We'll have more volleyball action for you. We'll have the championship match between Kaleida and Liberty Benson here on WOSN. Hello and welcome to Kaleida for the championship match of the Pioneer Days Volleyball Invitational. Our scoreboard sponsor is Finley Truck and RV. Today, scoreboard, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. And presenting sponsor is the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all of your banking and financial service needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC and equal housing lender. Hi everybody, Garrett Mansfield. The next to Mark Shine tonight. And Mark, we have two teams that have endured the day. They are here for the championship match. And two teams that are pretty, pretty good. Well, as I look at this, uh, Garrett, I, I think both teams have quality setters. Both teams have quality liberos. And so I'm interested in seeing who dominates at the net. Whichever team has the best net play, I think, in this particular match wins. And they're both talented at the net. So let's see how that plays out. Look at the starters first on the Kalina end. Uh, they'll go with Catherine Krause, Restrar. Adeline Huber, Livia Meyer, Malia Romas, and the libero starts out there, Madison Underfirth. Josie Todd, Ellie Norman, Decora DeHart, Lindsay May, Megan Gurkin, Emily Eink will start for the Liberty Benton Eagles, and also the libero is number five, Maddie Amstutz. See Malia Romas a little too strong on the opening attack of the match, so serve will stay with Ellie Norman of Liberty Benson. Into the air it goes, received by Huber. And now the Wildcats have to adjust, but outside the antenna. Correct, it outside the antenna. Didn't have a good angle at that. So it's quickly 2-0 Liberty Benton. They're four and three, but on a win streak lately. Yep. Started the season two and, uh, what, two and three, I guess it was, one and three. Two and three, got a yep. couple today. They took down a, uh, they took down Allen East to start the day, then defeated Fairview to improve to four and three. And here they are, two set wins in both of those matches for the Eagles to start the day. For Kaleida, a two set win over North Central to start the, the action in this very gym. You know, it's a two gym system here at the Pioneer Days Volleyball Invite. And then after that, Delphi St. John's took the Wildcats to three sets, but they ultimately prevailed. And Delphi St. John's, just before this match, took the third place match over Fairview. It's been a long day. You know, Kaleida played at 9 a.m. this morning. It's 3.15 right now. So it's been a long day for the girls here today. Yes, it has. Here's Straw with the serve. That's going to tip off of Amstutz off the suspended basket and over and out. That basket is considered to be ceiling material here at Kaleida. Up high enough and nearly horizontal to the floor. Next serve goes in. And here's DeHartz. Stays up for Kaleida. And that's going to be a miss hit from Olivia Meyer. That might have started with the pass. Yeah, Catherine Cross tried to make a better set, but she just couldn't get it to an area where her teammate could use it. Hence the point goes to Liberty Benton. 
I misspoke earlier at the start. Madison Underfirth as the libero. Carly Siefker in at that role in the white shirt for Kaleida. And attack for Sophie Vorst. That gets off a fingertip. Finds the floor in the back end. Wildcats back to within one. Our officials today, and Ellerbrock is our R1. Up on the stand, our R2 on the floor is Ryan Vierhoff. Here's Meyer with the serve. Set for Todd, going for Dihar, and too long on the cross-court attack. Todd throws up about nine assists per set. Almost got one right there, and DeHart, and she is one of the more efficient hitters on this team. In fact, her hitting rate is the highest for the Eagles entering the day. Now, a couple more matches have gone by today to alter some of that. Malia Romas powers that one over with the two hands. Malia had 20 kills in the semifinal match with Dolpha St. John. She's got two already here in this set. 6-3, junior. Now here comes Meyer, continues to serve for Kaleida. Received by Norman, and Todd sets for Daharin. This gets blocked up front, looked like the tandem of Huber and Romus, but probably Huber was the main contact there. Yeah, those two have had a really good day today in, in both of their games prior to this one. They're starting out well in this one. A lot of presence, and they're playing side by side in this match. Blocked up front. Continuation here for Kaleida and a big collision. And fortunately, we have smiles on the other end of that. Let's make sure everybody gets up after that one. Point will go to Liberty Benson. Catherine Krauss gives up a smile and a thumbs up. And I think the Cats are going to make a change defensively. Madison Unverfurth in for Meyer defensively. Here's the serve for the sophomore Cora DeHart. Set for Romus in the middle. Dug out by DeHart, kept it alive, and she knew that was a big swing. And now Huber just has to send it over, but. You know, she took a moment to look down at Carly Siefker, like, are you going to play it or am I? And she got her eyes off the ball a little bit and then didn't make solid contact with it. That heads out, even at six. Start this championship match. First set, best of three between these two will decide it. And that's going to go off of Unverfirth and out. Ace for the Eagles. To Hart with that ace. She had eight prior to today's action. Here's the next serve for Liberty Benson. And received there by Siefger. Third hit's got to go over. Unverfirth with the send. Todd sets cross court for Lindsey May. She had a very good match against Fairview, and it turns into points here for the Eagles. She pushed that with fingertips rather than with her uh, typical action, you know, with a, with a more powerful hit. Kind of threw the defense off a little bit. Here's DeHartz. And too far on the serve. Now you're going to have Kaleida step back and serve this one. Maddie Amstutz checks in on the defensive end for Liberty Benton as their libero in the black jersey. Here's Leah Romas on the serve, and that just sank for the ace. She had four aces in their semifinal match. In the opening match that we saw today, their semifinal match, when this particular rotation, she was the setter. Now a line drive dug out by Norman. Now May drives that one down, but a good save by Carly Siefker. Now we keep the volley going, tied at eight. May, nice dig by Unverfirth, punched over the top by Huber. Great volley we have going. And now Eink sends it a little too far. And Kaleida wins the point. They're going to keep serving. Ellie Norman made a really good play on the ball for Liberty Benton as well, but Kaleida persistent to capture the point. 
Serve goes in for Romas. Finds that coffin corner in the back end. She had 23 aces before today. As I said, four in the semifinal match, already two in this match. Received by Amstutz. And see if you're a bad set, got to get hit with the air. It was, and she tried to set the ball with her fingertips as the libero in front of the 10-foot line, which would have been a difficult play for a teammate. She cannot do that and have a teammate spike the ball. Mm. Libero's in front of the 10-foot line. It must be underhand action if the ball's contacted above the height of the net by your teammate. Good attack. Kendall Krause, but dug out, and uh, Liberty Benton comes back. Lindsey May with the point to even us at 10. Lindsey already now with three kills in her own right. This is Josie Todd to serve it up for the Eagles. Received by Siefger. Now Romas with the set for Huber, back corner. It's in on this line, Judge. The other agrees. Point Kaleida. Big time hitting in this contest already, isn't it? And two, the two teams that have hit the best through the day that we've seen. And here's Siefger. Sophomore libero starts the play. Here's Lindsey May on the cross court try. Couldn't quite get it down. Said Malia Romas is the setter in this particular rotation. They did this in the opening set in their semifinal match and then they brought an Izzy Wrecker to set in sets two and three. Big block in the front. And hey, look at that, Emily Eink found a, an opening, a soft spot, and scores it for the Eagles. Megan Gherkin checks in for Liberty Benson. Emily Eink, 6'3", and made a nice athletic play on that ball. Romas just dumps it over the top. <laughs> Basically just guided it over. It was already heading that way. Here's Huber on the... You know, I, I'm smiling on that, Garrett, because at 6-3 and a setter, she cannot hit the ball when it's above the height of the net because it's an illegal contact when you're a back row player. So she's standing on the floor and almost <laughs> made contact with yep. the ball illegally but did not. Adeline Huber, after getting that last kill, serves it in for Kaleida. Now here's an attack from Olivia Meyer, dug out of the backside by May. We're gonna get a whistle to kill the play down, and so we had a cat in the net. We're gonna get Olivia Meyer up there. Followed the flight of the ball. I didn't see the net contact, but it was Olivia Meyer that they caught. And the attack, Strar, she's gonna get a kill. And Kaleida now with a two point upper hand in this first set. Here's the rotation, Catherine Krause on the rotation with Kendall Krause. Catherine will now play in the back row and serve. Pushed over by Gherkin. Three Free ball, ball goes, yep. yep. Free ball, see what they do with it. I think it's blocked up in the front. Got all that size for Kaleida. Henry Benton tried to soft play it over and Romas is too tall. There's a hit for Hawkinson. And it just falls right in. Romas, high IQ play. No one doesn't have to use power. Found the, the hole in the defense, and that triggers our first timeout of the match. It'll be at the 16-12 mark. We'll take it as well. Be back on WOSN. Back at Kaleida, where the Wildcats have a four-point advantage on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Their first set of the day, or first set of the championship match, should say. And a big block. Romas involved again. And the Wildcats starting to find their groove. 
as this first set ages. Thought that the net play would be the key in this. At that timeout, four kills for Ruby Benton and nine for Kaleida. So net play certainly has gone the way of the Wildcats. Ball sent over and now Kaleida is at the straw. It's gonna go over on the dig. Romas attacks and scores it. She's got six kills and two aces out of their 18 points. Mm -hmm. Continues to impress. All morning and into the afternoon. Good serve by Catherine Kraus. Here's her set to Romas. Dug by Todd. Now Amstutz underhand to Hawkinson. Nice dig for Hubert. Uh, set it outside, Kraus to Strar. And a big block in the middle. And we got a whistle against Liberty Benson. Two hits up by the net. He said that to Julie Todd's foot went all the way across the center line. Time out again. A rally for Kaleida continues. We'll step aside as well. More volleyball action from Kaleida is next on WOSN. Back at Kaleida, the serve is now in. 19-12 lead for the Wildcats in their first set. Over Liberty Benson. Long set out to Strar. Nice dig for Maddie Amsnuts. Here's Megan Gherkin, and she's going to get a point. And that long run for Kaleida comes to a close, but the Eagles now... They only have six points to play with to try to come back with. Good score for Gherkin coming out of the timeout. Break that, that uh, run that was going by Kyle Wildcats. And going to be an ace for Liberty Benson. And Ellie Norman will get another turn. So they get two points back the last exchange. Goes in, received by Huber. Kraus long set for Romus. And it's blocked up there by Cora DeHart. Now here's Megan Gherkin. The Eagles starting to find it. Two out of the last three points have gone the way of Liberty Benton Eagles. That one by Gherkin, 5'10", sophomore. Set for Kraus, Romus left side, just punched it right down into the floor. That set was right on the net, and it could not have been a better set for her to put that one away. Thanks to Catherine Kraus. Collided first to 20. Five point advantage, five to go. Into the air. Reese Strahr gonna get an ace, and. Keep the needle moving for Kaleida. She had three aces in the semifinal match with Delphi St. John's. It's her first one in this set. Setting up for DeHart. Now Romus, nice pancake for Amstutz. That it was. Look at that, nice dig. Amstutz there again with the answer on the attack for Romas. She saved two points right here in this point, but not that uh, one. Goes right back at her, but, oh, yep. yep. They called uh, Romas for being in the net on the follow through with her swing. Both officials had it. That'll bring Alyssa Roberts in. She will serve now for Liberty Benson. So go for Sophie Vorst, and she scores it. Her second kill was set. Olivia Meyer now to serve. Sets by Katherine Krause, the senior, has been really good here in this opening set. And that's going to be into the net. Madison Underfirth in defensively for Kaleida. 
Jillian Roberts to serve now for the Eagles. After checking in. There's the attack. And Lindsey May. Good strike, but too long. Just missed the back line. That was really well struck ball. She just missed the back line. So serving back here is Romus. And another ace. The third one of this set. She throws the ball high, contacts it high, gets a lot of overspin on the ball, so it crosses the net and dives. And with power. That was more conventional, mm -hmm. sir. Here's Lindsey May. Now Romus will set. And off timing with Huber, but play lives on. And a block. Huber connected with Kendall Kraus. And that ends the first set, a 25-17. Set one victory for the host Wildcats. We'll take a timeout, return for the second set here at the Pioneer Days Volleyball Invitational at Kaleida High School on WOSN. For our second set at Kaleida, and our scoreboard is brought to you by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. And our presenting sponsor of our volleyball action is the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all of your banking and financial service needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC, an equal housing lender. Garrett Mansfield with Mark Shine, and you saw the host. Wildcats get that first set. They'll get the first point here in set two. And this is one of those games, Mark, that, you know, volleyball is so momentum driven. And if you can get it early, that can really help you out. Absolutely. There's going to be an ace in the opening set. Kaleida had 14 kills, four aces. They missed a serve. Seven of those kills were by Romus. Three of the aces were by Romus. And then on the other side, just six kills in the opening set for Liberty Benton. Three by Lindsey May. They had two aces and missed a serve. There's a miss serve. It's going to hand the serve back to uh, the Eagles. On the flip side of that, it's just not been the, the MO for the, the play, at least in this gym, most of the day. And we've seen a lot of tight sets, competitive matches go back and forth. And you know, that first set, we didn't. We didn't see a timeout until uh, the 16-12 mark. There's a block on a May attack. Now back to May. She didn't make it over the net. That's going to be a Kaleida score. Saw those two blockers there try to hit a little extra hard. And when that happens, sometimes you do what she did. That was put it into the tape. There's Catherine Krause in to serve. She had a really nice opening set. Into the air, it goes to or from Kraus. And Emily Eink. Long on the attempt. Yeah, Liberty Benton wanted a touch. None of the four officials had that, so the point goes to Kaleida. Next serve for Kraus. Received by Amstutz. And May just trying to shove it over, but that, those long arms from Malia Romas disrupted the uh, the thought. More volleyball this week on WSN. Lincoln View and Crestview NWC match on Tuesday will air on Wednesday night. Coldwater St. Henry, a MAC match on Thursday. That will air on Friday night as that serve goes long. This Jesse or Lindsay May will serve it. Received by the libero Carly Siefker. Now Romus cross court. That lands in. Turned that hand sideways, got some spin on it, and drove it into the sideline. Here's Reese Straw to serve it up for the Wildcats. So 
replay. You can only do that once per serve. Seed by Amstutz. Set for Megan Gherkin. And wide on the attempt. Kastar is going to serve again. She cannot have a replay again during this service turn. Dug out by Kaleida. Shoved over by Kraus. Now here's Eink. And Kraus got under it. But no other Wildcat was able to catch up. I got the kill good for her, but Catherine Krause did something really intelligent. She knew she was not in a position where she could legally set the ball, so she pushed it back to the corner, just tried to get it over, really heads up play, but then Ike gets the point. Seed by Huber. Gonna go over from Seeker. And that's gonna fall down for the Eagles. My unofficial score sheet has that as DeHart's first kill of the set and this match. Mm -hmm. After having eight in the semifinal win. So they go out the back end. Here's Olivia Meyer, her serve received by Ellie Hawkinson. Now Hawkinson attacks, that's in. Right in the back corner, you needed both line judges to rule that one. Really good placement by Hawkinson, her first kill in this match. Madison Underfirth will check in. Maybe Benton needs to get on a roll. That's a good way to start. There it is. Allie Norman with the ace. She had one in the opening set, now one in this set. Found that open spot right in the middle of the floor where the ball died. Norman serving again. Under Firth to Kraus to Romas, dug by Amstutz. Now here's Megan Gherkin. There goes Huber. And it's going to be short. Yeah, she mistimed that a little bit, the, the, the sophomore Huber. She's had a good match today that we have seen, but that was not one of her better hits. And I got a 50-50 at the net, and it's going to go to Liberty Benson. Like Krause got a little too far over that line. Yeah, her hand actually went over the line and touched the floor. That was the call. And Liberty Benton's clawed back to get it at 8-8. Camden Warnicke on the defensive end for Kaleida now. Good service run by Norman. Kraus the set. Huber's swing is blocked. And now DeHart. Here's Romas and the kill. I think that shows Malia Romas' talent because I thought that set was a little low for her to do what she was still able to do, and that is drive it into the floor. Double figure kills for her now with 10. Good dig by Siefker. There's Gherkin. And that's going to go to Kaleida. Got four contacts as it came back to her without clearing the net or being touched. Romas to serve where she had three aces in the opening set, and then she will be the setter for Kaleida. Landed down by Sophie Vorst. Give her credit on the kill. She's kind of left-handed it over. A little bit awkward type of play, but got a point out of it. Rub is serving again. Received by May. They're going to go to DeHart. 
Kept alive by Seifner. And Dehart claws that one over. Of course, Matthew wanted a catch and a hold and a throw down. Didn't get the call. It's one of those prolonged contact things. The official has to decide instantaneously, is it or isn't it? Pushed over by Huber. Zach and out. Too long on the try for Lindsey May. Lindsey May, third team Blanchard Valley Conference player a year ago. Back for her senior year. Now she goes another try there. And somehow the Wildcats get it over, but a hand in the net. Kendall Krause thought the ball was going to be short, so she went up to play it and then tried to not play it, cut her hand in the net. That negates the, what would have been a score for Kaleida. So here's DeHart again. Lines this one up. Received by Seifkert. And Huber. Be a third try, and somehow May was able to get an attack landed on a couple of long passes. Well, I think Camden Warnicky thought the ball was going to be out and then realized at the last moment it was not going to be, so she made an effort on the ball, a good effort, but the point went to Liberty Benton. That's recede for the Wildcats. Strar, that's planted on the other end. Kaleida now by two. Addison, Adam, Adam, yeah, help me out here. Adeline Huber to serve. Sophomore's got a really good future, don't you think? I, I think she's played really so. well today. And this whole, this whole team yeah, there's a couple of seniors and going to be quite the competitive unit in the next couple of seasons. See Carly Skeefer upset with herself. She instantly just kind of reacted to play the ball and realized after she had done so it was going to sail along. But it's one of those things that's coming right at you. Okay, I got to play it. I got to play it. And then you realize that, well, okay. Once again, Liberty Benton trying to even this set. Strar and they do. Miss hit. All tied at 13. A Liberty Benton playing to try to continue the match. A Kaleida win in this set ends the Pioneer Days championship match. See Maddie Amstutz tying her shoe. And Josie Todd to initiate the play. And she scores a, an ace. Got it underneath Vorst. And they've taken a lead in this set. That's received by Huber. Roma sets it up for Strar, and she lands it along that far side. She's had two kills in this set and three for the match here in the championship game. Seniors had a, a good afternoon. 14 all. Here's Catherine Kraus. And Ty over the center line. Gonna give the point to Kaleida now by one. Romus has rotated back to the front row. And let's see if Clyde is able to string several points together here with her going to be in the front row for the next three service turns. So received by Alyssa Roberts. And Hawkinson sneaks one down in front of Kraus to even us back to 15. Her second kill in this set. Here's Megan Gherkin re-entering the game. And a 
Another for Liberty Benson. This one on an ace from Lindsey May. Her first of today, ninth of the season. And that's a punishing attack. 16 all. She's going to come out. She took a hit. Yeah, that was a that was a hard one. Give her a minute to shake that one off. And with that, Reese Shar will serve it up again for the Wildcats. And a block up front. Wildcats back up by one. Romus was allowed to reach across the net that time because it was third contact. Certainly took care of that. And they're tech checking Josie Todd. Got the trainer over here checking her for a concussion. Received by Liberty Benton. And Hawkinson, another block in the front for Romus. Had forced on her left shoulder. Cats by two. Six kills in this set, 13 total for Romus. I got touched over the top, so Liberty Benton plays on, and look at that. Well placed by Megan Gherkin. Nobody in that part of the floor. Saw the two blockers come in front of her, and that opened up that space on her right side to dump the ball and stop that little rally. That'll go out the back end. An ace for Liberty Benson. And we are tied at 18. And that's going to fall in again. Back to back. How about that? And they are doing that. They've taken uh, Josie Todd to the locker room. Hopefully that's just for more evaluation. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're going to get a timeout at 18-19 as Liberty Benton has taken the lead in the second set. We'll be back after this on WOSN. Back at Kaleida and another ace for Liberty Benton. They had strung a couple together to take the lead and now rallying here in the second set, trying to force a third in this championship match. But service ace, Amstutz. That Amstutz served three aces. Now she's had, she missed a couple of serves, but that was really powerful to get her back going again. Josie Todd's back on the bench, and let's see how that evaluation went. Hawkinson sends this one towards the back row. And Krause had to be careful walking a tightrope and allowed Huber to get up there and finish the score for Kaleida. A square at 20. It's a wonderful job of making a set and avoiding getting into the net or stepping across the line. Here's Olivia Meyer. Serve goes in, received by Ann Stutz. Pass goes up over to Megan Gherkin. And now Vorst. She'll plant that in the middle of the Liberty Benton defense to give Kaleida a one-point lead. Good sign, Josie Todd pops back up into the game. Had a conversation with Coach Todd, and I'm ready to go. Obviously got a good evaluation from the trainer. Yep. Glad to see her back. Lindsey May sends it over. And now Romas blocked. How about that tandem in the front with Allie Hawkinson, Cora DeHart? Hawkinson, I think, got the block, but she was there with DeHart. And with that, Ellie Norman's turn to serve comes back around. She came up holding her arm. That hurt, but she got a point for it. Short on the serve. 
Kalina closing in. Need to finish with a two-point cushion. And we're gonna get a timeout, Liberty Benson. We'll take it too. Back after this on WOSN. Back at Kaleida, where our presenting sponsor is the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all of your banking and financial needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC and equal housing lender. Lomas is rotated to the back row where she serves. Use those long arms to get that dig. Play rolls on. Third ball over. Now Liberty Benton sets up, blocked up front by Huber, but the Eagles find a space and score it to even us at 22. How about the play of DeHart here in this set and particularly on that point. Just outstanding. You could tell that we're at 22 all because the play has become frantic now. Yes. Kalida trying to close it out. Liberty Benton trying to keep it to a third set. Here's Huber. And May with the, the kill. And a nice pass deflected off of Kalida on this near side. Kalida still has a timeout if they need it. So does Liberty Benton. Forced. And she plants that one on a cross court attack. I think that's one of her first kills from this side of the floor. Agreed. She has four, but I think that's the first one that she's had from this side. She's got four in the two sets combined. Carly Seifker serving now. 23 all. Todd with the set for Lindsey May. And that's going to score it for Liberty Benton. Set point. You do, you go to your senior. When you need a point, you go to your senior leader and she's been able to respond. And DeHart will now serve. And Kaleida takes a timeout. They're gonna talk it over. Up against the wall here. Will we need a third? We'll find out when we come back on WOSN. Back at Kaleida where our scoreboard is sponsored by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. Roberts coming at the timeout to try to serve this one out. Set point here for Liberty Benson, and Huber gets the kill. Kaleida will have the serve, and now you get what you call volleyball overtime. <laughs> Got to win by two now. So Huber to serve. She just had that kill off a pass from Romas. Line drive, and it goes out wide to the right. Now set point back in Liberty Benton's favor. And this is always the interesting part about the way the rally scoring works is you get the serve back after you did your job on offense, and then you got to give the ball away. <laughs> Here's Todd to serve. Roma setting. It goes over. Did that go in? It did. It, did. it was supposed to be a set that <laughs> was off target, but she's gonna get a kill out of it. Yeah, you could see her, her shake her head and she kind of buried her head in her hands for a moment because she knew she had misset it, but she still got a point out of it to go to 25 all. And Romus is back in the front row. Krause's serve. May gets blocked and now the tides have turned to set or match points Kaleida. That set was a little bit long and a not a good play. Here, we're going to have another timeout. 26 25. We'll take it also. We'll be back to see the result of the next rally that decides how much volleyball we have left from Kaleida on WOSN. Both teams break huddle out of the timeout. 26 25. It's match point Kaleida with the serve. Catherine Kraus serves it up. And Ike with a big hit. Kaleida keeps it off the floor. Play by Seifker. Here's May, dug out by Huber. Step for Stroyer. And sent over by the Wildcats. Stays alive. Stroyer again. 
Now here's Hawkinson, dug by Huber. A little dump off, but returned. Here's Meyer on the try. And a little miss hit causes the point to go back to Liberty Benson. You know, on set point, Wilmus never touched the ball. The, the passing was such to the point where they couldn't set it to her, couldn't get it to her from the setter, and so she never touched the ball on, on match point. Pass from Kraus to Romus, and that's an emphatic way to get the point back. I think she touched that one. Match point stays now, or back with Kaleida. Sophie Vorst into the front row. Stryer to serve it. Todd with the underhand serve. Back row attack from Lindsey May. And almost got away from Stroyer. Gonna go to Eink. And she hits it. We keep going. Got it off the tape, but she got it to fall on the sideline over here. She likes to go that direction to her, towards her left shoulder and got that one to fall for her to go to 27 all. Nobody has a timeout left, so we're going to just keep playing. Maddie M. Stunt serve. It's an ace. Set point for Liberty Benson. Her fourth ace of this set. And we have gone back and forth. In the late stage of this match, and there's another ace, and Liberty Benton extends the match to a third set. 29-27. Winner take all set coming your way next. Watching high school volleyball on WOSN. Welcome back to the Pioneer Days. Volleyball Invitational, hosted by Kaleida. The presenting sponsor is the State Bank. Contact the State Bank for all of your financial and service needs. Visit yourstatebank.com. Member FDIC and equal housing lender. One set apiece. We've got some people sitting on the floor here. They need to be up in the bleachers. That's what our delay is. 29 points in that set for Liberty Benton. Eight aces and 13 kills. There's 21 of their 29 points in that set. They earned it, not having mistakes made by Collider to give them points. And yeah, there's an opening kill for Lindsey May. Lindsey May had six kills, three in each set coming before that one being her seventh. Allie Hawkinson will check into the contest. And serving Josie Todd. Stroyer with the attack. <coughs> and Eink lands a kill from her middle position. Well, you know she's going to go to her left shoulder. They were there, just not able to play it because the ball was hit too hard. There's Kendall Krause on the last attack. Lindsey May and Hubert is playing self-defense, able to keep the play going. Now she digs it out another. Romus to Kraus. Liberty Benton finds May, dug by Siefker. And now Huber fires it over. Todd to Eink, wide on the near side. You know what's really interesting about this, Garrett? They started Romus in the back row this time, and that will change who she will attack as she now rotates to the front row from who she attacked in the previous two sets. Interesting coaching move by Coach Matthew. And, oh, Liberty Benton thought they had a... That one finished off, and now May, an attacking air ties the score at two. I was set to write the point down. Really nice play to keep that one alive and obviously end up with the point on the miss hit. There's your serve in. And 
Emily Eink punishes that ball, got the point back. One of the few times she's gone to her right to hit the ball towards a deep corner. Now Lindsey May. And just sailed by Carly Siefger. And another ace for Liberty Benton. They have really thrived in their service game today. They have 10, now 11 aces here as we just started set number three. They've missed four serves, but they've had a lot of positive numbers off serve. And that right there will make a little difficult play because they couldn't get the initial pass up. Attack for Gherkin. Now Siefger. Josie Todd passes for Megan Gherkin. And the attack for Olivia Meyer. Here's Eink again, goes with the changeup. Bumped back on, on the Eagles' side. Now block, but we continue, not done. And we're still early then. Intense play from that last set is carrying over into this one. And a huge block will still turn into a Kaleida score. Mike was there, she just couldn't get her hands turned around to get the ball pointed back towards the court. It went out of bounds. And that's gonna go out a little long for Reese Strahr. Serving now for Liberty Benton, Maddie Amstutz. She did that outstandingly in set two where she had five aces. And the air out the back side. Four five early on that Finley truck and RV scoreboard. Received by the Eagles. There's the attack for Hawkinson. Was it a touch at the net? Yes, it was. Now Liberty Benton will rotate around. They'll get Ellie Norman to serve. Kaleida makes a defensive change, sending Camden Warnicky into the contest. Received by Romas. And she's gonna get the set there, but a good block for DeHart. Pushed over by Gherkin. Now Kaleida can get organized, and Huber fires it out the back end. Kaleida back in action PCL-wise on Tuesday night. They have Continental, Thursday they have Ayersview, and next Saturday they have Crestview. So their schedule for this week, Liberty Benton has a BBC game on Monday when they have Arcadia at home. And there's a miss hit from Huber. And on the 14th, they have Lake as well. So that's their, their week for them coming up this week. And they've got out to an 8-4 lead here. Goes in for the Eagles. Romas with this, a, a get-right score for Kaleida. When you're struggling, get the ball mm -hmm. to your best player. That's what they did right there. Short set, put it away. And now Romas rotates back to serve. Hit over by May. And deflected by Seifke. Liberty Benton has not attacked many times out of the back row. That time they did and got a point for it. Serve is in. Romas sets up Huber. Blocked up front by Liberty Benton. And there's a big block. But May now in the next try, didn't make it over. Point Kaleida. Set was outside the court and she had a little bit longer approach to get to that one. Surfing next, Sophie Vorst.
Here's May. Blocked and then into the antenna, so last touch by the Wildcats. That's 10 6. Cooper was there for the block, but as you said, she blocked it into the antenna off a strong hit from May. Cora DeHart on the serve, off the very top of the net. Here's Huber, blocked and up in the air. Collided a try again. Stryer over. Now May, big block up front. Now into the back row for Collida. Here's Kraus, and that wasn't gonna clear the net. But Eink was there for good measure. Emily with three kills out of their eight, out of their 11 points here. Serve for DeHart. And Stroyer is blocked. That's another score for Liberty Benton. And there's the timeout for Kaleida. Trying to get right halfway through this third and decisive set. We'll bring you the action when we come back on WOSN. Eagles of Liberty Benton with some momentum. Halfway through this third set, Kaleida looking to just get right. Except for Seifer, Stryer sends it over. Now here's May, and she hits that back line and scores it. It's first to 25 in these best of three. You know, Garrett, when we first began this thing, we talked about who would have the best net play. Well, there are eight kills in this set for Liberty Benton to just two for Kaleida. There's the attack. Diving dig for Lindsey May, and I ain't gonna get hit with a ball handling error. One of the first things officials look for is footwork. How are your feet set under the ball before you contact it? And hers were not set properly, so actually a pretty easy call. She had to run a long way to try to hit that one. Here's Adeline Huber on the serve for Kaleida. And that's gonna turn into another Kaleida score. So they get a couple of them right back. A bit of an overpass ends up being a point. Serve in and met by Matty Amstutz, but Eagles get tied up or get tangled up. It's gonna be an ace, so Huber keeps moving. Her second ace of this match. She had three in the semifinal. They try to claw their way back into this. And she moves that one short. Her third service error in the finals match today. So see, Todd's played well. We thought maybe she had a serious injury type thing, but she's yep. come back and played well. Glad to see that. The Eagles as a whole, they've actually, they actually kind of started to turn the corner. When she had to leave the game, and they kind of rallied around that. And they get another tally to lead it 15-9. Emily Ike has had a really good third set for the senior. Set for Romus, for Olivia Meyer, and that's gonna land for the Wildcats. Well, Romus has rotated back to the front row and facing a five-point deficit. This is the time that Kaleida needs to step on the gas. So here's Catherine Krauss serving. And they had the Eagles left guessing on the receive end. It's an ace for the Wildcats. Got some ground to make up here in the third. First to 25 in this one is your, cha your tournament champion. One-handed dig for Huber. Al Stryer out. And Ank sends it over for Liberty Benton. Wildcats rally to the ball. Third hit finds its way on the other side. 
Here's a big hit for Lindsey May, but blocked up front. The Eagles continue with it. Now Kaleida gets organized, and Romas slings that one down. Hard to handle. One of the few times today she has missed timed her jump as we get a timeout. Liberty Benton will try to stop the momentum. A six-point lead is down to three. We'll be back with more from Coletta on WOSN. Back at Kaleida, we're coming down the stretch. Third set, winner of this one is your tournament champion. And a big kill for the Eagles. That Kind of disrupts the scoring table and everything. And I've got Emily Ike for six kills in this set and 10 in the match altogether. This has been a really good set for Emily Ike. Now she has been a force. Aaron May with the serve. Outside to Romus. Yeah, I don't know if Liberty Benton's going to be able to get back to that, but Ike got a chance and missed it. She did have a chance to, it's an awkward play because she was a little bit off balance trying to get to the ball. Really good play though by Maddie Amstead. She's had a good match today. Now Kaleida's turn to serve. And now we're gonna have some discussion. what you do, you send your captain over to talk to the yep. head referee. That was done correctly by Coach Matthew. And over by Gherkin. Long run for Izzy Recker to set. She just came in to serve that particular one. Hadn't played here in uh, much in this match. Now Matty Ann Stunts will serve it for Liberty Benton. Goes to her counterparts, Carly Siefger, punched over by Meyer, and blocked up front. Stays on Kaleida's end. Siefger to Olivia Meyer, dug out by Amstutz. There's Gherkin over for Liberty Benton. And Romus. Just tapped it over the top, got the result she desired. Surprised every little bit. That is her fourth kill in this match. She's got 19 now. Now Meyer serves it in. Set up from Todd to Gherkin. And they're gonna set her across center line. Krauss doing everything she could to not get in the net and not go over the line. And just couldn't get their feet down after he had to try to chase down that errant pass. Eighteen fourteen. Liberty Benton with the upper hand. Long set for Huber. Timed that one up nicely. Had a player fly by defensively and just dropped it right in behind her. Well, you can see Roma's faked as if she was going to be the one to receive the pass. That kind of opened things up for Huber. But Liberty Benton survived having Malia Romas in the front row as she goes back to serve. Laura DeHart fires it long. And now Kaleida within two. Wildcats looking to rally. Trailed 12-6 at one point. Almost all the way back. There's a third ball over. Romas to Huber. Nice dig by Norman, but it's blocked up front as it went over the top. Back-to-back uh, -back good plays by Adeline Huber. The first one was the good kill, and then when the ball came, popped back over. She's right there to put it away. And Romas has it deflected off. And it's an ace. We're all square at 18. Each team has a timeout left. 
what you expect in a championship match. That's right. I wouldn't be surprised if both teams end up using each of their timeout before it's all said and done. Here's Kendall Krause, dug out by Amstutz. Got to try to get her up off the floor and hit long on the attack. Liberty Benton's going to take a timeout. Yeah, they are. 1918 Kaleida starting to get some of that energy back on their side. We'll take the break and return on WOSN. Back in our final set of the day. No matter how this one ends, one set apiece, championship match, Kaleida and Liberty Benton at the Pioneer Day Volleyball Invitational. Here's the attack from Vorst, dug out by Gherkin. And DeHart just drops it in, but Kaleida adjusts. Look at this, well defended by the Wildcats. Keeps the ball off the floor. That's the name of the game. You just gotta keep that volley going. Here's DeHart, blocked again. Man, great net play defensively by Kaleida out of the timeout. Nice dig, Ellie Norman. That time for LB. What a point this has been. Here's an attack for Kraus. And Norman, another nice dig. Now May, dig by Seifger. Here's Vorst, drops it over the top for Gherkin. DeHart is blocked, and now it's the Eagles' turn to rally. And Romas just sends that one to the back row. DeHart blocked, kept alive, pushed over by Gherkin, and this hit continues. Everyone's starting to hold their breath with every hit, and Vorst comes up short. What a play. An and, absolute wonderful point. And several players, hands on knees. Sophie Vorst is injured. She's going to come out and be replaced by Mackenzie Remlinger. She took something in the shoulder, I think. Could be what? Cause the, yeah. and the because, short attempt. And because she uh, came out, they had a substitution come in. They're asking for a lineup check to make sure everybody is correctly where they belong on the floor. You know, Garrett, when it was 11 6 in favor of Liberty Benton, I said at that timeout, I thought Kaleida looked tired. Yeah. They have found another gear and they've gotten it back to where they were head one. Now it's a tie match again. Serve goes back in 19 all. Attacked by Kraus and blocked up front by Cora DeHart. And now Liberty Benson in the driver's seat up one. But it's not a, it's a close race. Went over and was touched. So we keep moving. DeHart again, blocked, but it went down on the Kaleida end. Liberty Benton continued to play. They thought that there was a four contact on Kaleida's side that nobody on Liberty Benton's side had touched the ball. And for a moment, they stopped and we're going to get a timeout. Yeah, we do. That'll be Kaleida's turn to take it. And that's the end of our timeouts. We'll have the entirety of this one when we come back. You're watching High School Volleyball from Kaleida on WOSN. Liberty Benton with the serve and a two-point lead in the deciding set. The Kaleida Pioneer Days Volleyball Invitational. There's a set for Huber and a big hit. But Liberty Benton plays it. Stays alive on their attack. Sent over by Remlinger. And an open space found for Cora DeHart. And now the Eagles with a three-point lead with three to go. Cora DeHart did not have a kill in this set until about the last three or four plays. And she has come up big time with three kills. There's Huber. She hits and connects on the kill. Alan Huber now has nine kills in this match. Carly, see if you're serving. That was a huge point, yeah. Garrett. Kaleida needed that. Now they've got possession of the ball, trailing by two. Serve. Met by the Eagles. And to Hart, 
finishes the Eagles within two. And the big sophomore, the 6'1 sophomore, has really come through in the last several points. Now she rotates back and she will serve. Liberty Benton has had a lot of success coming over to this tournament. Years past. And closing in on another memorable trip as they are now locked in to match point. Huber tried to go cross court and missed. Got to keep in mind though, that, I mean, this is still a division four against division two. Now that doesn't automatically mean anything, but Kaleida, and they have played very hard against a very good Liberty Benton squad. And Huber fires it over. They're trying to rally. Romas, Huber, Doug, but, oh, they play the ball that would have been out. So now Liberty Benton with another attempt. May block, but it's out of bounds, and that will end it. Lindsey May, the senior, comes through with the deciding kill. And that seals it for the Liberty Benton Eagles. They win this match as the scores go 25-17, 29-27, and then 25-20. Emily Ike had 10 kills in the match. Six of them came in the beginning part of set three. And then when it got really close, Cora DeHart came up with really big. She ended up with seven kills in the match, four of them in the last several points. Really interesting match for them, Malia Romes. Romans comes up with 19 kills. Huber ends up with nine. I think both teams had a really good day today. They've learned a lot of things and will take them through the rest of the season. No, no kidding there. We saw a lot of good volleyball today, too, too Mark, from a, a number of programs that are going to be playing probably deep into the season. Yeah, I thought Fairview was very good today. St. John's had a good day, I think. Uh, I didn't get to see some of the other teams play because they were in the other gym. But I think those teams, I think there's four teams we named today who've had good experiences being in this Pioneer Tournament. And we'll look forward to what they do now the rest of the season. That pretty much puts a, a bow around it. Not only this Invitational, but the Invitational season, per se, for volleyball as we get settled into league play and start making that trek through the rest of the season. I want to thank everybody here at Kaleida for the entire day, AD Adam Huber and company uh, from the accommodations, from our crew, Megan Sherrick, both in the studio and on site. He's Mark Shine. I'm Garrett Mansfield. Thanks to our sponsors, Finley Truck and RV and the State Bank. We're saying so long from Kaleida. Thank you for watching High School Volleyball on WOSM. <laughs>